Oh, Rowlet, you're adorable. I think you're one of the cutest Pokemon starters ever made. Hmm. Actually, that gives me an idea. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's RJ, and welcome to another episode of RJ Draws, where I will be drawing my favorite Pokemon starters from all generations. So we are starting off here with the first generation and the Kanto starters. And this was really tough. I, I pretty much, if I just think about it on a general basis, I like all three Kanto starters equally. I mean, it's hard to beat the original three starters of Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. However, if I did have to pick just one, I would definitely pick Bulbasaur. I, it's, I'm not actually quite sure why. I think mostly it has to do with I like the style of his first design and then of his evolution into Ivysaur. I'm not a big fan of his final evolution into Venusaur, but I, I like the way he looks in the first two evolutions. So I'd say that's one of the reasons. And then the second reason is, I, I don't know why, but I really enjoy Vine Whip from Grass Types. I remember watching Pokemon as a kid and watching the early, early series, the very first series, and you Ash would go Bulbasaur Vine Whip, and you just see him whip this thing out. It looked so cool, and so yeah, that that that's one of the reasons why Bulbasaur is one of my favorites. Also, he he's kind of like a tiny dinosaur. Well, I guess in the early generations they all they all were like tiny dinosaurs, but Bulbasaur seemed even more of a tiny dinosaur because he got like the little scale patterns that dinosaurs would seem to have. So that's why I picked Bulbasaur here, and I actually had a lot of fun doing this, the bulb part. The bulb is so much fun to draw because it's like a bunch of semicircles. And also coloring as well. The interesting thing with coloring is I only have a certain set of markers, so not necessarily every color that the Pokemon I chose have, I actually have represented in a single marker color. So I had to get creative with a couple of them, and that included the shadowing as well. Just It, it wasn't exactly from what I saw in references, but it was close enough, and you do like a mix and match with colors. Bulbasaur here was pretty direct. He's just different shades of green, and his eyes are red. He's got a couple shades of pink for the inside of his mouth, like so. And there's also shades of green for his shadowing. I'd say maybe the hardest part are his little designs, but those are also shades of green, and there you have it. That is Bulbasaur. All right, and now we are moving on to Johto. Man, I also really like the Johto types. The, the Kanto and the Johto starters were right on point, but I do have a Johto type that really stands out for me, and that is Cyndaquil, the little fire type. First of all, he's he's just plain adorable. He He's like a little rodent pet or like a little porcupine or hedgehog that you could get as a pet at this pet store. And that's one thing. Second, his little face. Just just the expressions he would make on the show and the expressions he'd have in the games. I don't know. I always had an appeal to him. And also, his evolutions are awesome. And he's a fire type. I think I tend to gravitate towards fire types in general. Just because I enjoy fire. And fire is one of the more powerful Pokemon moves. At least in my opinion, it seems to be one of the more powerful ones. So, Cyndaquil was definitely in my top three of maybe all-time favorite starters. So with him, I had to get a little more creative marker-wise. You can see me struggling with the markers here, that's actually kind of funny. But yeah, with him I had to get a slightly more creative, and that mostly had to do with the fact that the main shade of his body, not, not so much the yellowing of his belly, but like the outer part was a color I didn't actually have. So I had to look into it, I had to think a bit more. The fire was really simple, you just have red on yellow. That, 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 that was pretty straightforward. But he, he was a, he's really fun. I like to make him happy. There was a lot of them where he was angry too. It was hard to decide if I wanted to draw him angry or draw him happy. But I eventually decided to go with drawing him, ha drawing him happy just because he, he just looked too adorable when he was happy. So I thought, yeah, why not? Let's make him happy. Ha happy's cute. Happy's adorable. <laughs> so at, as you can see here, I put on a shade of green first and then I put on a shade of blue. And that's what 
gives Cyndaquil his sort of blue-green dark coloring there for his body. If I were to just put the blue on, it would end up being a normal shade of a dark blue and it wouldn't make sort of that semi-green color there, which is pretty interesting. It's nice to see what you can do when you mix and match the colors of your markers. Now you put the flames on and adding a shadow and there we will have Cyndaquil. Alright, this one here we are moving on to Hoenn! And definitely my favorite here, without a doubt, is Torchic. Actually, when I started making my favorite Pokemon starters list, I noticed that I tend to like bird Pokemon. Torchic I definitely like. He was one of the first ones I saw when I first laid eyes and knew what Pokemon was back, well, back way back in the early days when I first started watching the show as a kid. Hoenn was actually the series I saw first before the original series, and Torchic was definitely one of my favorites on that show. He's just so happy. He's a fire type, which again is awesome, and he just, he looks totally squishable. It looks like you can just pick him up and squeeze him, and he'll love you forever. And that, that as a kid, that was very appealing. It's like, oh, look at this cute little chick thing. And Torchic, yeah, he, he's pretty cool. Really simple to make. He's just got two basic colors, yellow and orange. So it was pretty basic to put him in there, but it was still a lot of fun to sort of give him a happy dance. And there you have Torchic. And now moving on to Sinnoh. Man, Sinnoh was a long time ago now. I know we're all dying for Sinnoh remakes like that'll ever happen. <laughs> but my favorite starter of Sinnoh is definitely Piplup. Penguins are just adorable. Once again, bird Pokemon, the adorableness. It's... That seems to be a factor with a lot of my choices with Pokemon starters. And I think this is, yep, he's the first water type to appear on this list. So water types, they're pretty cool. They got some nice moves. However, whenever I pick a water type, I do have issues battling them against grass for obvious reasons. The Piplup, he's a pretty happy-going guy. He was pretty humorous on the TV show. He was quite a sassy little character there. Always getting into trouble and getting mad, kind of a spoiled little Piplup. That was kind of entertaining. So we're just finishing up here. They're using dark blues and light blues and a little bit of dark blue for a shadow. And there we will have our adorable Piplup. Now we're moving on to the black and white generation of Unova. And honestly, I'd, I'd say the one I'm drawing now, Oshawott. He's the only one I really liked out of the starters or many of the Unova Pokemon. I don't know what it was about Unova. I, I could never really get into it that much. It was one of the first Pokemon games I played back when I first got just a simple DS system. And it was the one, the first one I saw when I walked into the store. And I went, yeah, okay, I'll try this for my first one. And it just kind of escalated from there. And I mean, obviously now I can play the new ones on the newer DS, but... Yeah, I picked Oshawa when I did that game. Here, Oshawa does have a lighter belly, but for the sake of the purpose of the kinds of markers I had and to kind of give it a nicer, sort of different design from other Oshawats, I decided to go with some darker colors here, trying to put in some shadows there. Oshawa surprisingly has a lot of enunciations of purple. Probably not as prominent as I'm going to be putting them down here, but he definitely has certain enunciations Annunciations of purple, which actually surprised me because he seemed kind of the same with Cyndaquil where he's got like a blue greenish scheme going on But for him, it's actually kind of more of a bluish purple scheme going on Which is interesting, but yeah, Oshawa, he's he's odd an otter. He's obviously based on an otter Otters are cute otters are adorable and I don't know if I'm that much of a fan of his final final evolution But he's he's pretty cool in this phase. I can't really say much about him for the TV show since I didn't watch it, but he, he, was a, he was a pretty cool design, so I liked him. And we're just going to put in the eyes here, and we will have our Oshawa. There you go. Next up, we have the Kalos starter Pokemon. And once again, similar to the Unova one, there was only one that really kind of drew my eye, and that was Fennekin, the fox Pokemon. I thought Fennekin looked pretty cool. Once again, another fire type. I think the only two water types on this list are Piplup and Oshawott. But 
Yeah, I'd say out of all the Pokemon things, X and Y was kind of my least-ish favorite. I mean, I liked it for certain reasons. It definitely had a cool style, and they definitely upgraded a lot of things in terms of animation, which was really nice, but kind of in terms of story and some character designs and just the way some things went with the Pokemon, it seemed... I don't know, it just, it seemed kind of strange. I'm still not quite sure how I feel about Kalos, because there's some things about it that I really like, and there's other things about it where I have no clue what its purpose is or why it's there at all. But Fennekin was definitely a cool one. He was pretty adorable. I don't know how he associated with France, though. Maybe that was my issue with Kalos. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of France. Not sure why. But this was, the game was just so blatantly like, Oh, this is France. This building looks like the Eiffel Tower, see? And in most Pokemon games, you, I mean, you get a sense of what region it is, but it's not like in your face. And I don't know, with X and Y, it just seemed really in your face, and that seemed kind of unnecessary. But as the same with Torchic here, Fennekin's got some pretty simple color designs. Just simple oranges and yellows and whites once again. And here is actually interesting. Because there were certain colorations on Fennekin where it wasn't enunciated with a dark line first. It just kind of blended into each other. For example, the way where the white and the yellow cross together. And similarly with sort of the belly there with the two different shades of yellow. That, that was interesting to test out to see. But yeah, it was... I don't know much, what, much else to say about Fennekin. He was a cute little guy. I'd say I like his final evolution pretty good. I'm not quite sure about his middle one. People have commented how he kind of looks like a witch from Harry Potter. But there you go. We're finishing up the tail there. Going to put some color on the nose. And we will have our adorable little Fennekin from X and Y. And finally, we get to... What I believe is my all-time favorite starter of all time now, Rowlet from Pokemon Sun and Moon. Now, I know very clearly why I love Rowlet so much. And it's not just because he's cute or that he's a grass type, because grass types are pretty fun. And that he's also a ghost type, which is pretty cool. It has to do with the fact that he looks like a barn owl, and barn owls are my favorite animal of all time. I love owls, but the barn owl in particular, there's just something about them that they just seem so cool to me. So, obviously, since Rowlet is a design based off of a barn owl, he is my all-time favorite. He's got that cute little round face. I loved it how in their, sort of when they introduced the starters for Sun and Moon, they had that animation of him turning his head 720 degrees behind to look at himself. That was, that was pretty cool. It was nice to see how they featured little tiny features from the real life animals and associated them into sort of the battle designs of the Pokemon. I really enjoyed that. That was that was a lot of fun to see. So Rowlet, yep, he, he's definitely the best. I'd say Sun and Moon is... Sun and Moon's a really good game. And all the starters for Sun and Moon are pretty good too. I know people didn't like Pulplio at first, but I mean, with me, it was no doubt. I, I like them... I liked the other two about equally, Litten and Polplio, but without a doubt, Rowlet was my number one choice. So the minute I played the game, I chose him, and I never had any doubts. He was just perfect. R Rowlet's just adorable. <laughs> so yeah, I'd say if I had to pick between all of the starters, Rowlet is definitely my favorite. I'm gonna let out a quick warning right now. The camera kind of ran, ran out of footage, so it'll cut off here, but we will show an image of the full completed Rowlet at the end. So this is our completed Rowlet, which marks the end of me drawing Pokemon starters. If you guys like this video, go ahead and put a pause up and press that like button. It's very much appreciated. I enjoy seeing what people like to see and what they don't like to see, even though it doesn't really matter YouTube statistic-wise. And also, feel free to comment and subscribe as well. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and check out our Facebook and Instagram pages to see stuff you will not see here. And hopefully I will be drawing more in the future.